If you take Burkina Faso, 50% of the land territory of Burkina Faso is occupied by Islamic insurgents. The Islamic insurgents are attacking Burkina, they are attacking Guinea, they are attacking Mali. There have been reports that they've attacked uh, Northern Benin and Northern Togo. Intelligence reports suggest that these Islamic insurgents have sleeping bases in Ghana and that they have moved as far south as below Tamale and so on. This is our reality. You understand? Then we talk about the piracy in the Atlantic Ocean, which is also growing and is becoming a major concern for the international community. Then there is the Azawad movement, which is fighting for the Azawad Republic, which strides all over, you know, over Niger, Mali, and so on. The Azawad Republic is also spreading. You understand? The economic conditions in West Africa are horrible, exceedingly horrible. If you take Ghana, we need 128% uh, of our total national revenue for three line items. Repayment of debt, debt servicing, and public sector emolument. It's a failed economy. You understand? Now, this is the region in which we are. These leaders who are threatening to go and stage war and so on, they are responsible for this total mess in West Africa. Now, one thing baffles me. They are talking about going to restore democracy in Niger. Was there democracy in Niger before the coup? Was there anything which looked like democracy in Niger before the coup? These are frightened leaders, leaders who are faint, who are frightened that what is happening eventually would engulf them, and they are desperately trying, you know, to, 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 to smolder the, the, the flames, you know, in the region. And they will not succeed. They are only going to create a lot more problems for the people of the region. Now, are these not the same leaders who went to La Côte d'Ivoire when the French armed forces overthrew Lorraine Gbagbo and installed uh, Alassane Ouattara to go and congratulate Alassane Ouattara? Where is their commitment to democracy? Why? These West African leaders have been changing their constitutions, uh, allowing themselves to go for third terms, in spite of the massive protest that is taking place. When the leaders have changed their constitutions and have gone for third terms, is this not the same West African leaders who go there to go and congratulate them? What is their commitment to democracy? What is their commitment to democracy? One of the things that you've done which, which is just completely crazy. You have Tinubu, eh, who has won a disputed election. The matter is in court. It has not been finished. West African leaders meet and make him their chairman. And they say that they are committed to democracy. These crazy leaders we have in West Africa. They go and make Tinubu. They, they are not even patient enough to wait for the outcome of the petition before the court. They will make him their chairman. And then they turn around and tell us that, oh, as for them, they love democracy. What kind of democracy do they love? In any case, who is going to benefit from military intervention in Niger? It's the West. If you take France, hmm, one out of every three light bulbs is powered by, by, by uranium from Niger. One out of every three light bulbs is powered by uranium from, from, from Niger. And yet, Niger is one of the poorest countries in the world. And our leaders are not thinking about this, this paradox. <laughs> you understand? What they care about is going to install one of their colleagues who messed up so much. You understand? That, that's what they care about. If you take all of the French-speaking African states, all of them keep their foreign reserves in the Central Bank of France. The consequence is that these African countries borrow their own money and pay interest on their own money that they have borrowed. And West African leaders are not sensible enough to realize that the way out of this is to have a common currency for West Africa, eh, which enables these French-speaking countries to break away from French neocolonialism. They are not even sensible to realize that that is the key to solving many of the economic problems which confront us in the sub-region. They can't see that. We've been talking about a West African country, uh, currency for how long? What have they done in order to promote that? And then they go and sit somewhere in Abuja and they decide that they are going to send soldiers. Whose soldiers will go and die? 
to install a useless president whose children should go and die. You think that the soldiers, they are just there to die for any useless cause? They are not. They should try it. They should try it and send soldiers there. When the soldiers get killed, they will see the repercussions in their own countries. It has happened many times, the ripple effect. Why? All of these West African leaders who are meeting to make these declarations and so on, how many of them enjoy the popularity that these cool leaders enjoy? This young guy who recently returned from the Africa, the Russia Africa summit, you saw how the whole country. Mobilize to go and meet him at the airport. Let, let any of these West African leaders, Timibu, uh, Alassan, Watara, and so on, try to mobilize people to show support and see how many people will turn up. When ECOWAS sent a delegation to Mali to go and persuade the Malians to hand over, did they see the hundreds of thousands of people who poured out into the street in support of their regimes? Did they see it? How many of these West African leaders enjoy 10% of the popularity that these cool leaders enjoy? That must teach them a lesson. In any case, what is this democracy we are supposed to be protecting? What is this democracy we are supposed to be protecting? Who doesn't know that in West Africa, elections do not reflect the will of the people? Elections have become a joke. Vote buying is rampant. The use of violence in order to win elections is, is overwhelming. The things we do in West Africa, are these, are these the democratic elections? They should stop wasting our time. What we do in West Africa is that the last election, how many people died? Nobody has even bothered to investigate how those people died. And they call this democracy. Ayahuasca West Wogon. I met the victims of the Ayahuasca West Wogon. Some have lost their legs. Some have lost their eyes. Some have been disabled for life. Not one person has been punished for what happened in the house once you're gone. And then you turn around and say, we are running a democracy. What democracy? My brother, democracy, eh, whatever it means, must deliver what the people want. If it doesn't deliver what the people want, forget it. It is not democracy. Democracy, if you practice it, must lead to improving the people's access to social services, education, health, housing, employment, and so on. Which West African country is doing that? Democracy is about doing the will of the people. Which West African country is doing the will of the people? And then the joke of it all uh, is the statement which has been issued by government that as for Ghanaian soldiers, they don't like coups because they are professionals. What is that? Ghanaian soldiers took an oath to protect the constitution. Hmm? What we are doing here and there, what is constitutional about it? In any case, only recently, there is this tape recording which has been released, which nobody denies its authenticity, in which senior security personnel were discussing how to facilitate the rigging of the next elections. What is a coup d'etat? A coup d'etat is when you conspire huh, to prevent the people, huh, their votes from counting. That's a coup d'etat. It doesn't have to be so just tooting guns and so on. Some people are currently on trial for apparently discussing belonging to social media platforms and, uh, where the certain discussions took place. Our attitude to this leaked tip, tip she says very clearly that, in fact, we are happy with some coup d'etats. We are very happy with some coup d'etats. Because what were they discussing? That if you have a certain person there as IGP, the shenanigans which will enable them to bring the aid and so on will become possible. If you have somebody else, what is that? Is that not a coup d'etat? They should stop waiting now, yes. And you see, perhaps I have the advantage of age. I've seen all the coup cool d'etats from 1966 till now. I saw it. I lived through it. I can speak about the 1972 coup. Officials, security officials were saying that the coup d'etat was not possible. 
It happened. The soldiers did not even fire one, one shot. The Buzia government was kicked out of office. 1979, you had the likes of Chris Asha going around the country carrying weapons and saying that they were ready to fight coup d'etats. When uh, the soldiers struck, all of them ran away. There was nobody there to defend it. They all ran away. I've seen it before. 1981, how many people were not thumping their chest and creating the impression that they will fight coup d'etat. When General Rollins and a small band of, of, of soldiers struck, all of them ran away. They should stop wasting our time with this thing about going to resist and so resist what? Who is going to resist what? I have seen the consequences of coup d'etat. I've seen innocent women and mothers and sisters strip naked on the streets. I've seen the private parts being whipped. A I saw it. Why? In early 1982, I was, I was under detention in the military barracks. I saw what happened. Nana Kutreba Queen, who was the national chairman of the PMP, I was in the same cell with him. Okay? His son was brought into the same cell. He was forbidden to talk to his son. He was told that if he ever spoke to his son, with whom he was with in the same cell, he would be severely punished. They dug a trench, trench, put the local to the queen in the trench and started firing above his head. I saw it. I saw soldiers come to the Gonda Bar's guard room hmm, and tell some of the inmates that we were coming for them at midnight. At midnight, we heard the armored vehicles roll in and take these people that had been you know, selected in the afternoon. In five minutes, ten minutes, you heard the gang reports from Air Force Station were being executed without trial, without charge. 246 Ghanaians got missing. Missing, missing persons. 246 Ghanaians got missing. We sent a petition to the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice to investigate, and they said that it would open the fraud gates. Fraud gates of what? So, so I've seen all of this. <coughs> My own classmate, Lieutenant Tete, had gone out, you know, to jog, and he was on his way back home. They just shot him. Why did they shoot him? Because he was in a track suit. And track suits were presumed to be the uniforms of dissidents. He was shot, shot dead. My own friend Kwame Ajima was shot dead at the border guards headquarters. For what? For protesting against IMF measures, and so on. So, look, we have seen all of this before. And we would all have wished that we never return to this mayhem. Huh? Never return to the era of coup d'etat. All of us are not happy about coup d'etat. But you see, sometimes you ask yourself, what is the difference between a coup d'etat and what we have in West Africa now? The nine people who lost their lives after the la during the last elections, it was supposed to be in a civilian democratic order. They lost their lives. Loss of life, whether it's under coup d'etat or under civilian regime, is the same. Look at that. You understand what I'm saying? Huh? The people who were molested, who were shot, and so on, as I was in West Vogon, doesn't matter to them whether what happened to them, the atrocities committed against them, happened in, under coup regimes or under civilian regimes. It doesn't matter to them. The economic condition is driving people crazy. Whose democracy? Whose democracy are you protecting? The democracy of the masses? Or the democracy of, of, of the very, very few, the tiny few, who have managed to take us hostage through fraudulent elections? Is, 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 is that what they're talking about? Look, these West African leaders must understand in clear terms that any attempt to wage war on Niger will be resisted by the masses of West Africa. It will be resisted by the masses of West Africa. Already there are indications, Burkina, Guinea, and Mali, have said that any attack on Niger will be considered as an attack on them, an aggression against them, and they're going to fight. You see, these West African leaders, I think their thinking capacity is too small. Listen, you have Wagner in Burkina Faso, you are Wagner in Guinea. You are Wagner in, in, in Mali. Okay? The 
last time I checked, Wagner was also moving into, into Niger. They're going to wage war against these countries. They're going to confront Wagner. Are you going to bring back? Huh? Are, you, are, are you going to stage a scenario for Ukraine war in West Africa? Are you mad? Are these leaders crazy? I can't believe it. In any case, where is their capacity to wage war? They are doing all this uh, in, the, in, the, in the false belief that because it is in the Western interest to, 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 to fight the new regime in Niger, they are going to get support from the West, from France and others, to fight the new regime. That is their crazy idea. All these West African leaders have been sitting down. They have been complacent in the establishment of foreign military bases throughout West Africa. One of the reasons why Niger is so strategic to the West is that the U.S. is the largest drone base in the world is in Niger. Its largest drone base. West African leaders didn't see anything wrong with this. Why would the U.S. establish a drone base in, in a country? For what purpose? The drone base was established to produce chocolates uh, or to produce cotton. Certainly for war. They didn't care about it. They allowed the United States of America to establish the largest drone base in the world in Niger. Unbelievable. The Ghana government is also part of this, this, this so-called attempt to go and wage war. You understand? You have allowed the U.S. to establish a military base in your country. You understand? Now, U.S. soldiers in Ghana have more privileges than privileges prescribed by the Geneva Convention for, for diplomats. Your sovereignty is completely abused. The French have military bases everywhere and so on. We are not thinking about expelling these military bases from our soil, but we want to go and fight an African government, overthrow it, so that the French can continue to have access to uranium, to power their country and so on. These West African leaders, I don't know how to describe them. I mean, to call them reckless is an understatement. They are actually crazy, crazy. They should start the war and see what will happen in the region. <laughs> right.